Hello, my dear students of class 6. Welcome back to our English class. We have been doing a lot of lessons which are interesting, which are very helpful for us and which is also helping us to gather knowledge. And today we are going to discuss about a lesson that will deal with Lucky Deep. We will discuss about that later. But the title of our story is A Game of Chance. You see it here, right? A Game of Chance. And you will find that in chapter 8, page number 99. I repeat, chapter 8, page number 99. And I'm your tutor, Miss Vihokun Yovile from Mount Sinai Higher Secondary School. So if you have your textbook with you, I would like to request you to get your turn your pages to page number 99 because that's where our lesson starts, okay? We know that we have been learning so many new words, but in today's class, I'm going to give you only a little bit of words because I don't want to burden you. We know that we have to learn the vocabularies before we get into the story, right? I've always been stressing on this, and by now, I'm sure you know what we are going to do first. And so these are the word meanings that we are going to learn today, okay? The word meaning here, the first one will be tradesmen, okay? Tradesmen, shopkeepers or people who have goods to sell. Yes, repeat it. Shopkeepers or people who have goods to sell. This is the word meaning of tradesmen. Next one will be a trifle. Repeat a trifle. A trifle means an object of little value. Let's repeat. An object of little value. Next, Eid, a festival and celebration for Muslims. Repeat it, a festival and celebration for Muslims. We all have our own kind of celebration. We all have particular festivals to celebrate. For the Christians, we know that Christmas and the Easter becomes a very important festival for each and every one of us, right? For the Hindus, there will be Doga Puja and so, so many other festivals. And so likewise, the story that we are going to be discussing today is related, related to Eid, okay? Eid festival. Now, I'm sure you know what Eid is because you have even been getting holidays. As we are living in India, we know we are in a secular country, right? India, the Indian constitution does not um, focus only on one religion, but it has given the right for each and every one, or for each and every religion to practice their own kind of religion. So that is why we get holidays on all kinds of festivals, whether you are a Christian, a Hindu, or a Muslim, or any other religion, it all becomes the same. Okay, so that is what you need to remember. And even as you grow up, you are in class 6 now, even as you grow up, you have to know that we all need to respect each religion with regard and with respect. Okay, we need to respect one another in order to have a harmonious life, isn't it? So these are the word meanings that we are going to be using in our story. Now you have gone through this. I want you to quickly look at it again. The three words are tradesman, a trifle, and eat. I'm going to give you only these three word meanings today because giving you too much will be troublesome for you. It would become a burden for you. I don't want to do that, and but I want you to be clear with the three words that I have given you today, okay? Yes, these are pictures from Eid celebration. We hear people wishing each other on the Eid festival, right? So these are Muslim children. They're, they're wishing each other on the festival of Eid. Okay, that is what you have to understand. We all greet one another during festivals. And so even the Muslims do the same thing. This is how they greet one another on Eid festival. Okay, and during festivals, we know that even here in Nagaland, okay, Coming into the narrower region, let's discuss about Nagaland. During Christmas, there will be trade fairs in Kohima, in Dimapur, and in so many places, right? So trade fairs are places where people from different regions, even from outside, we have international expo. All those are a kind of trade fairs, okay? So people from all over the world or maybe from all over the country come to showcase their products. That means whatever they have made, they will come to showcase it as well as sell it. And this also creates more unity in the, uh, among the people who come, who come into contact through this kind of trade fairs. And so we are going to discuss about a celebration in a small village. 
Remember, it is a celebration in a small village and it is just for a day. But the dread fear will go on for some days. That is what we always experience. Christmas falls on 25th of December, but the celebration continues for almost 15, 20 days also. There will be dread fears. There will be different kinds of events that are organized in relation to the festival. So the same thing happens in all religion and in all festivals. Though the real celebration of Eid comes just one day, the trade fair in that village will go on for days and everyone likes to go and enjoy there. They would go and see the things that are being sold. They would go and play in some kinds of activities. That is what we do, isn't it? You know what is a lucky dip, right? You buy a ticket for some certain amount of money and then you also get the chance to win so many things. And that becomes too exciting for all of us. Forget about young children or students, but even adults want to try their luck. Sometimes they lose it, sometimes they win it. That depends on their luck. But the game that we are going to be discussing about today is going to be a game which you may not expect. I will not be telling you the detail right now, but you will get to know that at the end of the story. Okay, so in order to understand everything, you have to be focused here and you have to be listening with full attention. That's what I'm requesting you. Yes, I've told you, it's a scene in a village during Eid, right? It is not in a town, it is just in a village. And during Eid, I told you that the celebration is just for one day, but the threat fear will go for many days. It is associated with this Eid festival and it goes on, okay? So threatsmen from far and wide will come to sell. We have discussed about that, right? We have learned the meaning of threatsmen, a person who brings things to sell, right? And so, there will be tradesmen from all the regions to sell their goods. They will come with all different kinds of activities, not only about selling goods, okay? But there will be so many activities. People will be showing their magic tricks and so on. And it is also a way to attract young children and also to keep people entertained. We all want to be entertained, right? I'm sure you don't want to go to a place where you get boring after one or two hours. But in a trade fair, what do you experience? You keep roaming the threat fear for the whole day and you don't even realize, right? You don't even realize that it's time for you to go back home. And that is exactly what we are discussing about in this story, okay? In the threat fear, what can you find? Okay, we are discussing about this village threat fear. I'm not discussing about any other threat fear. Of course, there are so many different kinds of threat fears, okay? And in this, you will find everything. That means you can just... You imagine of anything, you will find that. From a small pin, you know what is pin, right? Safety pin, you can imagine of that. From a small safety pin to a buffalo. So can you just imagine along with me a thread fear where you will find the smallest things and also the biggest of things. Imagine getting wildlife or even animals and then getting those, those things which are used for decorating. Okay, so it is a threat fear like that. So that is going to be applicable to every age, to people of every age. Because for a person, for a farmer, you might be going to buy some tools for a young children, for a young child, what does he do? He would go and buy some toys and the, it varies from person to person. Your choices, what you like may not be liked by your parents. What your parents liked may not be liked by you. But this is a place for everyone. It brings everyone together because they will find everything of their choices. Yes, this is what a threat fear looks like, okay? I've just given you two simple pictures. So there will be people thronging. That means people gathering in crowds to go and look for things. And so in a threat fear, as I said, you will find things from the smallest to the biggest, and so you can even find clothings, you can even find accessories like the earrings and the bangles, you can even find food items, there will be some people organizing games, and there will be a lot of people. The most interesting part would be there would be a lot of people with different interests, but they all gather in the same place, not knowing how their time flies. And there is a boy, okay? There is a boy in this story. He is going to tell us everything that he experienced in the threat fear. He is going to have a different kind of experience and you will also enjoy listening to what he says, okay? And the boy said that he along with uncle and Baya, Baya is the person who worked in the house, okay? There is a brother who works in the house. We 
we have helpers at home. Some of you may not be having helpers, but your cousins will be helping you. Sometimes your mother may be working alone. But when your mother and your father is too busy that they cannot give all their time at home helping the children and also helping the, in the household works, what do we do? We bring some good souls to help us at home, isn't it? Not because they are weaker, but because they are kind enough to come and help us at home. You keep helpers. So we have to respect them. They are the ones who make our works easier. And so they also have a person like that, a helper. And the boy calls him Baya. Okay, Baya along with uncle and the boy went to the trade fair. And the boy was excited to see the people roaming around. And also of the things that are happening in the trade fair. Okay, it was a big crowd. A big crowd. And uncle was leading that to the boy and Baya. Okay, we will, call, we will also call him as Baya, the helper. And so, uncle was leading the two of them. We, when we go out, what do we do? We don't just go around as we wish, isn't it? And you can also learn something from here. You should always follow the elders. And when you go to the crowded place, if you get lost or if you lost your way, what will happen? Even if you are to be found back, imagine the fear that goes in your mind. You will get nervous, right? Or your parents and your elders would be panicking, looking for you. That causes a lot of trouble. And that's why it is always wise to keep following elders when you go to crowded place like this. And so our narrator, the boy is also doing the same thing. He was following his uncle along with Baya. And then when they were working, some of his friends, that means some of his uncle's friends met him and they wanted to spend some time. Elders get very busy that they don't even meet friends, right? They're all busy in their own works. So when they get to meet, they want to spend some time. After maybe uncle and his friends were meeting after a long time. And so they would obviously want to go to a place and talk together or maybe have a cup of tea and talk together. And so that's what exactly uncle wants to do. His friends called him. So he turned to the two boys, Baya and our narrator, okay, and then told them that they can have a look around if they want while he spent his time with some of his friends. And so they were excited because they want to have a look around. Whether you buy it or not, it is always exciting to have a look around at the things that are being sold. Because in our regular markets, if you go to a cloth store, you will just find clothes. But in a thread fair, it's not like that. You will find all kinds of products there. You will find clothing. As I told you, you will find accessories. You will find food items. And the list will continue. Okay. So he was so excited to have a look around with Baya. But uncle gave them a condition. That means he told them to follow something. That is, that they should never buy anything unless he comes back. And it is not wise for students or children to buy things on their own without asking elders or parents, right? I'm sure your parents tell you that when they give you some money to go to the shop and buy, even if you want to buy sweets, you have to take permission because it is always wise to take the advices from our elders and our parents. They know what is good for us. We may like everything. We may, we may see the things around us and might want to buy everything that we see because that is what we actually do. But when elders advise us, that is something that we have to pay attention to. And so uncle told them that they should not buy anything until and unless he comes back. But he gave them the permission to walk around and look at the things that are being exposed or that are being shown. Okay, for sale, some may just be for exhibition, but he gave them the permission so that, so that they can spend their time happily. They were going around, but they promised uncle, so they also behaved according to that. They did not buy anything. He, actually, the boy, that is our narrator, he wanted to buy so many things that he see. There were so many things of that excites him, that makes him want to buy it. But he still remembers the word that he gave to his uncle. See, such an obedient boy our narrator is, right? And so that is what we all should do. Whether you are a boy or a girl, we should also act like this boy, keeping the promise and also remaining obedient to what our elders say. So, they, so I, as I've told you, they've seen so many things that they wanted to buy, but the boy controlled himself. But there is a shop called Lucky Shop, okay? The name of the shop is Lucky Shop. And there were so many people standing around that shop. 
and the owner was an, a middle-aged man, okay, N not too old and not very young. He was there and he looked as if he was not very lazy but not very smart too. Because what we usually see is, we see that shopkeepers are very smart, they keep calling customers, but this shopkeeper was not a person like that. He was not too smart but uh, it looks a little lazy and then a middle-aged man and he wants everyone to come and try their luck in his shop and what was the purpose of his shop i talked about lucky dip right so he runs a shop like that a person can buy six discs for 50 pies you know what is 50 pies right we we say atana isn't it and so 50 pies for 50 pies they can buy six discs and after buying the see this is the shop that we are talking about this is the shop called the lucky shop and there were people around and on the table there were so many dicks with numbers but the numbers were not seen so if you give 50 pies you can go and pick six dicks but the number will be will be hidden and so you can just go and randomly pick six after that what do you do you will add the numbers on the dicks and when you add those you know what is addition right we do plus and minus, plus and minus in math, so that is plus. You have to plus all the numbers on the disk. So after adding that, the number you get that you have to take that and go and find for the article, for the object, which has the number on it, okay? So the boy saw that an old man, an old man bought um, six disks for 50 pies. And when he added the numbers, it came up to 15, number 15. And so... When the old man went to check for the article, for the item, he found that there was a clock. Okay, you know what is a clock, right? He found a clock that is worth 15 rupees. See, this is a clock and the old man got the clock for worth 15 rupees just for 50 pies. Not even one rupee, okay? And when we are saying 15 rupees, in our generation, we will not get a clock for 15 rupees, right? But we are discussing about a story that had happened long back. It may be during your father's age or your grandfather's time. And so the old man went away very happily. The boy was already excited. He wanted to do it. And next, a young boy came again. The young boy was a little younger to him. And then when he played, what happened? He got a comb. Okay, you know what is a comb, right? The thing that we used to comb out here. And so the, he got the comb, but he did not like it. So the shopkeeper took the comb back for 25 pies. Next, what did he get? He got a fountain, fountain pen. You know what is a fountain pen? I'll show you the picture later. And that was worth two rupees. He just spent 50, 50 pies for that. So he got uh, what you call a comb. He did not like the shopkeeper bought it back. The young boy tried another. And then he got a fountain pen for worth two rupees. And the next he got a wristwatch. He got a wristwatch which costs 25 rupees. So he's just buying the ticket for 50 pies and he's getting all these things. And the next he tried again. What did he get? He got a lamb that is worth more than 10 rupees. And the young boy went home happily with a smile and a good deal of cash. He also got some cash and he was so excited about it. This is the comb that he got. But he sold it back to the shopkeeper for 25 pies. And the next is a fountain pen, this is a fountain pen and a wristwatch. So the fountain pen cost 3 rupees and the watch cost rupees 25. And the next, he got a lamb that is worth more than rupees 10. The exact price was not given, but this is what he got, okay? The boy was tempted to try his luck too. So Baya encouraged him and then he paid 50 pies like the others. But what did he get? He got two pencils, okay? At first, he got two pencils. He did not like it. The shopkeeper took it back for 25 pies, but he was at a loss of 25 pies because he paid 50 pies, right? He tried again and then he got a bottle of ink. That is worth rupees, no, 50, 25 pies again. So it's not making up to his profit, right? He, he played twice, but the, the price that he got was just the price of one, one round. And so he was running at a loss. He wanted to try again to see how the others are winning. And so he also tried the third luck, which is going to be continued in our next class. We cannot finish the story all in this class. So in order to understand and get to know what the boy gets in the next round, I want you to be present there. 
And so thank you for listening to this part and make sure that you are also present in the next class.